Okay, uh, last and final video, I think, of this series. Um, again, sorry for the lack of updates prior to this um, group of like four videos, um, but I'm kind of getting to the point where I can uh, focus a little bit more on the actual process instead of actually working on it. So what do we see here? We see the bottom of the Tesla drive unit. And I call it the bottom. It's really not the case. This is actually the top of the Tesla drive unit. So uh, you're thinking, well, why, why are we looking at it from underneath? Um, and plain and simple, um, if you look at this car from the side, there would have been you know, no room for that monstrosity to sit back here. Um, we've got frame members in the way. Uh, also too, like, especially the way this car is set up, um, the weight, it's better having that weight in front of the rear axle versus behind. Um, it would make the rear of this car like really oddly weighted, I think. Um, anyway, um, so it's upside down. So. Uh, one of my other videos talked about some of the things that I did um, to make it be able to be mounted this way. Um, so you can't um, mount them this way because there is an oil pickup typically at the top, right? So it picks up oil there. Trans uh, it's really, I think it's like thin, like transmission fluid, but gear oil. Um, and it splashes it over um, the couple of gears that are inside the drive unit. And in my case, a quaif differential also. So um, in order to, to make this work, um, you know, some people will drive these in reverse the entire time and put a reverse um, oil pump um, and flip it this way. So up is still up, but uh, I, I wasn't a fan of that to be honest. So what I did is I modified this thing this here is normally a breather on top of the transmission or the drive unit. This is now a drain. Um, and what's going to happen is this drain is going to come down and I'm going to build a reservoir. That reservoir um, has a, a fluid pump, an oil pump that pumps it up to a reservoir that's going to be up on top of the motor. And then gravity feed is going to um, feed to that silver um, AN fitting there. So that's something that I've added. So that silver fitting goes to the factory oil pump. Um, and instead of it going to the pickup that's inside there, it goes to that. So drain from the bottom pumped up to a reservoir up top, gravity fed here, and then that will splash lubricate um, the gears on the drive unit. Pretty cool setup, um, I think. Something I came up with myself. And then up here, we've got this guy. I don't know if you can see that or not, hopefully. Um, so that's what's gonna happen there is anything like excess fluid that if too much gets pumped up to the uh, reservoir. Um, the reservoir basically is going to have an overflow and the overflow is going to go back to the top of the transmission and then the reservoir is going to be vented. That vent will be the, I keep calling this thing a transmission, the um, drive unit. The vent in the reservoir will be the vent for the drive unit, right? So um, either way, that's how I've modified this. There is one last thing. See, I've got some paper towels stuffed in the axle outputs here. Um, I am waiting on some custom drive shafts. Evidently, Tesla uses a funky um, spline, metric spline for the inside of the drive shaft, um, or the part that goes into the CV. You can see the cup is in this one. Um, really, all I'm having made is the uh, axle itself, um, and I plan on using the original Corvette outers and the Tesla inners. Hopefully, the Corvette outers hold up. If not, I uh, have to rethink that. But either way, I was told that the outer portion of the drive shafts are completed and they're waiting on some tooling to uh, be able to uh, mate up to the inners. So either way, that's it for the drive unit. Uh, mechanical stuff at least. 
the electrical portion of the drive unit. Again, you see these orange wires. I've got more to make, obviously. And that's kind of next on the list, really, is to um, start wiring this thing, the high bolt. Wow, where were we? Sorry about that. Uh, GoPro randomly died. Um, the air, garage is air conditioned, it's like 80-ish degrees in here. It's 115 out in Phoenix right now, but uh, GoPro said, hey, I've had enough. So um, I'll try and pick up back up where I left off. Um, either way, I think I was talking about the electrical system. Uh, so again, obviously lots of electrical wiring to be ran. Um, right above kind of this mess of coolant hoses um, is going to be the high voltage box. So I was using a uh, kind of a pre-made box here. Um, it's really dusty because I'm not going to use it, but either way, it turned out to be too large for what I needed. So anyways, I'm going to have another video at some point um, regarding the high voltage box, probably pretty soon. Um, I ended up making one myself out of some uh, aluminum extrusions, the 2020, um, they're like 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter um, square extrusions and um, some uh, ABS plastic and some like a lake lectan cover. Um, so anyway, it's gonna go right here in the middle. The drive unit will be attached to that. Uh, inside will be the contactors, so they're basically big electronic relays. And all of these, so the batteries, again, there's two sets of Chevy Volt batteries. One set's going to be, well, uh, each set will be in series, and then those two sets will be in parallel. So I've got a diagram of how I intend to do that um, somewhere. I haven't really looked at it a lot lately. Um, but either way, two inputs um, from two sets of batteries to the um, high voltage box and then one output to the driving unit. Also outputs will be um, for like the AC compressor, the DC to DC converter, and then a spare. And then also uh, there will be an input for the charger. Um, which is probably going to be off port. I'm probably not going to put it on the car. Um, I probably won't ever uh, take this thing anywhere where I'll need to charge somewhere third party. Um, probably be me and myself and I the whole time. Um, so interior, the reason I'm showing you this is this panel in the center here, I'm going to have two um, battery disconnects that disconnect the battery actually the center of each battery basically. Uh, so they provide an interrupt. Um, there will also be fuses on those interrupts um, just in case something happens, right? So inside, easy access, um, be able to turn those off. Behind this panel, it's just kind of laying in there, it kind of just for fitment purposes, but hopefully you can see it. That is the DC to DC converter used out of a Chevy Volt. Um, so that'll take high voltage, uh, 360 to 400 volts from these batteries and um, supply the 12 volt system um, with uh, batteries. So uh, things like radio, the other electronics on board, lights, that sort of thing will run off of that 12 volt system. So that's how um, it'll get power. One other weird thing not related at all, um, but you can see the Corvette steering wheel here. Uh, we've got a different steering wheel for the car, but it's just here just to have it. Um, the Corvette uh, steering column um, with some custom adapters to adapt to uh, the Factory 5 manual rack. Um, steering will be uh, telescoping and tilt, so it's kind of cool. Um, very much like a modern car, obviously. And um, yeah, so that's that's about it for this thing. Um, again, some more updates will be coming soon. I've been able to work on this thing a lot more lately. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out. I do have a um, website that I'm kind of putting some of the things on, uh, chargedtoys.com. And um, yeah, so here we are. Again, questions, uh, put them in the comments below. 
Uh, if you're interested in everything I'm doing here, please follow, subscribe, so on and so forth. Um, and then I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.